Okay, this is a question that relates to energetics and the Q is MC delta T calculation. It also relates to required practical two. So pause, try part A. When you're ready, move on to part B, pause and try that, and then go through and review your answers. And pause again. So Q is MC delta T questions are very common, but this one is actually being done in a slightly unusual way. And that's because you're being given not even the Q value. You're going to have to work out the Q value so that you can work out delta T. So Q comes from a different route. Now, let's start off putting Q is MC delta T down and work out exactly what we have. And if we can try and do this systematically, it means that you can then try to work out where the gaps are that you need to fill in. So we're calculating the temperature rise, so I've put that down as X. We know that C is 4.18, that will always be provided. And the M is 50. Now this is an area that people sometimes get confused on, but we've got 25 cm cubed of each of the two solutions. So that's a total volume of 50, and as the question says, we assume a density of 1. Don't always expect to be told the density. Now, we have got to work out Q, so we're going to take a look. We've not got Q, which is measured in joules, but we have got delta H measured in kilojoules per mole. Now, from there, I'm going to convert it to joules per mole, because obviously Q is in joules. And to work out what joules is, I first of all need to know how many moles I'm working with. Now, I'm going to work out the moles of NaOH. And it actually could be either of them because they are that there is no limiting reagent here and there is nothing in excess. So you can do it's actually the same volume, same concentration on each. What we're going to do concentration is two moles per decimeter cubed, and my volume, 25 cm cubed, I'm remembering to divide by a thousand. From there, I see that I've got 0 0.05 moles of NaOH. Now, if I know how many joules per mole, and I know how many moles, I can work out that my total energy change for the 0 0.05 moles is 2,805 joules. Now, from there, I can go back to rearrange my Q is MC delta T, and I can put in the figures that I have. My Q is 2805, my M is 50, and my C is 4.18, as we've already established. From there, I can work out that the overall temperature rise is 13.4 degrees C. I've put on here where the mark allocations are for, so you can pause, take a look at those, if you want to just double check. And now we'll move on. To B, which is the bit that relates to required practical 2. But again, this is an unusual way of looking at it. It's different to most of the questions that you will see. And that's because in here we're dealing with an endothermic reaction. We know it's endothermic because on the reaction the temperature goes down. But the principles that you know for exothermic reactions apply. Now you have to do a line of best showing the temperature. Um, as it rises. And you take that back to four minutes, because four minutes is the point where we are going to find the theoretical maximum temperature change. For that reason, I'm not going to include this uh, plot in my line of best fit. If you remember, we want, in normal cases, the cooling curve. Here, we want the heating curve. So, if the cooling down here has taken more than a minute, we are going to take our curve from the point it starts to rise. So when I do, I can put my curve in and you can see it comes down. That's not necessarily the same as you would get. It works, but there can be a range in the curves that are accepted. Now, your temperature change at the time of mixing, you're going to calculate here. 
and I've taken my values, it's 17.2, that does not change. You're taking 17.2 as your temperature. On mine, the temperature came out as 10.8. It doesn't matter if yours comes out differently, as long as you subtract that figure from 17.2. So in my case, I have 6.4 degrees C.